Hi, everybody. My name's uh, Doug Shelley. I'm the VP of Product Development at Tesora. I'm here today to talk to you about what's new in the last couple releases of our product, uh, basically since Paris, since I did this in Paris. So I'm going to uh, talk about that. I'm going to try to get through the description of the features relatively quickly so I can go through a demo in the time that I have. So no further ado. So a little bit of background quickly. What's uh, Tesora uh, Database as a Service Platform? So this is Database as a Service for OpenStack. Shocking. Um, it's based on the Trove project, and the whole goal here is really self-service provisioning and lifecycle management. And that's why I got this nice graphic of this pop machine. <laughs> so basically select databases, provision them, lifecycle manage them. And one of the other goals is to leverage the, the uh, existing capabilities of the database, uh, of the underlying databases, and maximize them. Um, Tesora provides uh, guest images, which uh, we'll talk about a little more. Um, we support and test the guest images, which I think is, is critical to the success of the, pro of the product. Um, and we provide enterprise and community additions, which I'll touch on here now. So this kind of lays out the, our community and enterprise edition. So on the far left, you basically have the OpenStack community code, the OpenStack Trove project. Our, uh, both of our additions obviously are based off the, the OpenStack Trove project as well. We also have Horizon, which is what I'm going to show in my demo. Um, the community code, the community edition adds uh, simplified installation and configuration. The guest images are in there that we provide, and we do lots of testing and fix bugs and all sorts of wonderful things. On top of that, for the enterprise edition, you get into support, 24 uh, by 7 support. Um, we have guest images for uh, commercial proprietary databases. We also do something where, depending on the release cycle, we'll provide early access to features that aren't um, released upstream yet. Um, and there's some enterprise database as service features. I think I have one of those to go through today. And we've enhanced uh, the GUI, and uh, I'll show you that today when we uh, go through. OK, so since, um, since uh, Summit in Paris, we've released two uh, versions of the product, one in January, which was our 1.3 version. So these are the things that included. Uh, we released an Oracle 12C guest agent that's basically a proxy to talk to um, the cont a container database running within the Oracle 12C multi-tenant environment. Um, basically, it allows you to provision and manage pluggable databases within that context. Um, we released what was called in the community replication v2, which is basically failover capabilities for MySQL. Um, and start from incremental and sh start multiple replicas simultaneously. So I'll demo some of that. We added support for configuration groups in Horizon. So configuration groups is a mechanism in the product to uh, provide database-specific configuration parameters to instances or groups of instances. And we added new guest images for Maria and Postgres. Just today, if you're following press releases, we released uh, version 1.4. Um, this includes the, a guest agent for Oracle 11G. So this is a traditional NVM uh, guest that supports some basic provisioning of the instance and database and user management. We uh, did improvements to the Cassandra guest. So we added backup and restore configuration groups, user and DB management. We did a lot of work on Horizon. Um, we, uh, we did create database, user management, and cluster provisioning which we picked up from upstream, and also the data store inversion list was done. And we added guest images for Mongo 3, Postgres 9.4, and Couchbase 3. Oops, my timer here. So without further ado, let me get into this. So if anybody's seen me do this before, I like to demo on video because I don't trust like running live. So you can hiss and boo, Shane. <laughs> so, OK, so here we are. So this is our skinned horizon, right? So let me go here. So we're going to sign in to the dashboard. And what I'm going to show you, I'm going to take you through a lot of those things that I just described on those two slides. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you this new database uh, data store version and uh, data store list and data store version list functions. So you can see I have all these guest images loaded. And you can see them now. This previously didn't exist in horizon. You can drill into it and look at some details about it check out what versions of the data stores are available. I think I'm going to show MySQL because there's actually two versions. So I'm really slow. I don't know. I should do this faster. <laughs> so 5.5 five and 5.6 are there. OK, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to 
I'm going to demonstrate the replication failover capabilities in Horizon. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch an instance that's going to be my master. So I'm going to call it Doug Test Instance. I'm going to select a flavor for it, which will be one of my uh, Trove flavors here, one of my DBAS flavors, a me I think a medium. I'm going to put a, t a 10, 3, a 3 gig volume on it. <laughs> and I'm going to use 5.6. So this is going to provision uh, GTID-based, GTID global transaction ID-based replication in MySQL 5.6. And I'm going to create a database and a user for it. So now we're going to launch it. So when you do a video demo, launch is really, really fast. <laughs> there you go. It's already active. Look at that. <laughs> OK. So now we have our master. We are going to um, launch some replicas. So I'm going to launch, I think, two instances simultaneously. It'll both replicate off the master I created in the previous uh, part. So we're doing five, my, MySQL 5.6. And here we go. So basically, the source for initial state, we can pick replicate from instance. And this is new. We can, we can um, pick replica count, which is how many replicas it's going to fire up. OK, so off it goes. It's taken a backup of the master. You can see there, that'll finish. And then it'll launch the backup onto the two replicas and start replication. There we go. Three. So I got three MySQL instances live. And I'm going to just take you through and show you some of the details so you can see how it's set up. So this is the first replica. So you can see down there at the bottom, I hope, yep, um, it has a link back to the master. And you can see that the databases that I put on the master are now on the slave, on the replica. This is the second replica. And you can see it says is replica of, and that's the master. It has the database, my DB. And Right, so now what I'm going to do is, let me just stop it there. So one of the aspects of the failover feature in our, in version 1.4 is that you can, there's two operations you can do related to failover. The first one I'm going to show you is promote. So you can basically, at will, pick a, a replica, make him the master, and it'll take the, mas the current master and, and demote him to a replica. So I'll show you that. So there's a promote to replica source. So I picked replica 1. And it's going to knock out the master. So basically, it puts all the instances in promote state while it's running this. And then what will happen is it'll you know, reorient the topology, bring all the instances back up. And I'll show you that. So now they're back live. So we'll go into the master. And you notice now that it's, not, it's, it, it's a replica of another instance, which I'm going to click on, I believe. And you can see that the new master is replica one. And he has two replicas. So it basically just shifted the topology of the, of the replication network. And replica 2, you'll see, is still a replica, but now it's a replica of the replica 1. OK. And now I'm going to demonstrate the second, um, the second aspect of failover, which is you can, if you have a failed master, you can use the eject replica source function to knock it out of the replication network and the system will elect another master based on, there's a couple algorithms. I believe the one that's defaulted is um, most current, right? So let's do this. So you pick the eject replica source function. And so I'm kicking out replica one. So now it's going to decide between those, uh, the test instance and replica two which one to make the master. So we're going to look at replica one, and you'll notice that he's basically shut down. That I, I, fail, oh, I failed him. I went under the covers and knocked the MySQL engine out from underneath him so that I could cause the failure. So you can see here he's now no longer in the replication network. We're going to look at replica. We're going to look at test instance. He is now a, a still a slave, but now he's a slave of replica two, who got nominated to be the new master, which you can see right there. OK, so now we're going to go back. OK, that is the, that, that's kind of the demo of, of managing replication uh, in, within Horizon. Now I want to show you the clustering feature, with the, the clustering panel. So clustering for MongoDB was added in Juno. Um, this is the uh, 
Horizon panel for it that was just is, is actually just merging upstream currently, I think, but we've released it in 1.4. So I'm going to take you through provisioning a, a MongoDB cluster. I think it's MongoDB 2.6 cluster in uh, Horizon here. So we're going to pick a tiny instance because it's going to make, uh, it ends up making three, uh, a replica set with three instances in it, and I only had so much hardware to run this on. <laughs> uh, so here it's built, building the cluster, and as I said, this is a sharded replica set, and I start, it starts off with a single shard with a re replica set with three nodes in it, which I'm going to show you now. So, that, so that's the cluster description, the details of the cluster. The key thing on here is it shows you how to connect to it. You're basically connecting to a query router that was spun up as part of the uh, configuration. And here's the instances you can see it. Named them based on the name you typed into the original panel there. And then I just show some of the details of, these, of the instances in the cluster. So you can see this is the second uh, node that's in the cluster. And notice that the connection information for the, rep for the nodes in the cluster actually links back to the cluster entry, so you can actually get the, router, uh, the query router address. OK, so now we're going to add a shard. So um, basically, I, th at this time, the only shard you can add is you're basically creating another three-node replica set as a second shard. And so I'm going to get three more instances that you're going to see here. So the, yeah. So that's the details of the cluster, which are still the same. And there's the cluster with the shard added to it. So you pick up three more, another another full replica set. And here's some details of the of the of a node that's in the second shard. Okay, I believe now I'm going to shoot the cluster. So I'll do the terminate function, which will. Uh, delete all the instances, clean it all up, get rid of everything. And then we're going to move on to, um, I believe, configuration groups. Just one second here. OK, so as I said, configuration groups are a mechanism in Trove to manage database-specific parameters. And you can assign them to a single instance or multiple instances. It's a way to give the user more fine-grained control over uh, how the database is configured on the instance. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set up a I'm going to create a configuration group for, um, for a Percona 5.6, I believe. So I just name the configuration group, put a description in, um, pick which type of data store it is which actually causes a database-specific set of parameters lo to be loaded that get validated against. So you can't like assign Cassandra parameters to Percona. So now I'm going to um, drill into it and add details to the, there we go, add a parameter. So see, you can see it loaded all the MySQL Percona-specific parameters. We're going to pick a couple here. Max connections, I'm going to set it to 500. Then I'm going to add another one. I'm going to pick connect timeout. I'm going to set it to an hour, I think, or something like that. OK, then they apply that. And then basically what you can do at this point is I have this configuration group. I can assign it to running instances. So let's go do that. So behind the scenes, I started two Percona instances. So there they are. So now I'm going to show you how you attach a configuration group to one of those instances. So there's an attach configuration group option. And you just pick it, and it gets assigned. Now, when it gets assigned, it actually the, sends the new configuration down to the guest. And in certain cases, the guest it, it knows if the guest has to be rebooted, and it would tell you. And I'll show you that in a second. So you can see now the configuration group is, is on the instance, and it's running with those parameters that you just set. And then the other thing I can do is I can assign the same configuration group to more than one instance, which is one of the powers of the feature is that you can have multiple instances on the same configuration group, and then you can change the parameters in the configuration group, and it'll shoot, it, shoot that configuration down to all the instances at the same time. So you can see I'm just kind of going through. I signed it on the second instance, and it's there. So now what I'm going to show you is we're going to create a configuration group for Cassandra 2.1, and we're going to assign it at launch time. OK, so here we go. And you'll see 
you'll see that the parameters that it loads for Cassandra are markedly different than the ones it loaded for Pocona. So I'm just naming this Cassandra parameters, put a description in, and then we'll get into the So Cassandra 2.1, create it, go in, there it is. Let's go and add some parameters to it. I think I'm just going to add one parameter, and I think I'm going to add um, cluster name I added. Now let's launch a Cassandra instance and attach that configuration group at the time of launch. So we're just launching a large flavor with 5 gig volume. And we're going to go into the advanced panel and pick Cassandra for AMS configuration group and launch it. So there's our instance building. And let's just look at it. So you can see in the details, it's got the configuration group attached. Magic. <laughs> Now what are we going to do? We're going to we're going to detach the configuration group. So that's another function you can basically detach the config group and reset the instance to the default settings. So on one of the Percona instances, I'm just going to detach it. Now what you're going to see is detach always requires a restart. So it doesn't restart the instance immediately. It, it basically tells you that it's waiting to be restarted, and you can restart it whenever you want. So I'm going to push the restart. I push the restart button in there. It's active again. Re restarted the database on the instance. So now that's now running the original configuration. OK, now what I'm going to do. Right. So as I mentioned earlier, we, we uh, released today the Oracle 11.2 guest image and guest agent. So I'm just going to show launch of that. Uh, and I think that's the end. So we're going to create an Oracle instance here. So it has a special flavor with a big, a big uh, root volume, because that's what Oracle needs. I put a 10 gig Cinder volume under the data directory, 11.2 data store. I'm going to create a database on launch called Doug Test and a user for it. Typing. OK. So now the Oracle instance is launching on a VM that's that flavor with uh, that size. So there it's got a 10 gig volume. It even takes longer for the Oracle instance to launch in a video. <laughs> OK, so here's the instance details. You can see, again, the key thing down there is it it feeds back to you the locator that you're going to need from your application to connect to this database it just connected, it just launched. So it says like, for it gives an example of connection. So SQL plus is the Oracle command line utility, username, password at with the IP address and the database name. And I believe I'm going to show, just show that the users, check out the user tab here and the database tab. So it's got my Doug test database on it and my user Doug. And I believe that is it. Let me just go back here. OK, so that's uh, my demo. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, if you want to learn more about all this stuff, we have a booth right over there, T45. We have all this stuff on the web. And if you come to the booth, you have to find out what this is. OK, I'm not going to tell you. But it's very cool. OK, so come by the booth, and they'll give you a, a demo, and potentially you can walk away with one of these puppies here. So. Um, thank you very much.